What's up, everybody? It's your boy, Tone, one half of the best black movie review podcast in the world. In the world, Craig. This episode of the Black Blusters podcast is brought to you by Amazon Prime. Prime is more than just free shipping. Prime brings you closer to the things you care about today through shopping, streaming, and savings. For example, did you know that you can listen to your favorite podcast, like ours, through Amazon Music? Yup. You can also watch your favorite movies, like the ones we review on Blockbusters on Amazon Prime Video. Yup. But it doesn't stop there. You can use Prime to get more out of your interests. From purchasing behind-the-scenes books about your favorite movies, to listening to soundtracks of your favorite films. Yup. Yup. And yup. Whatever you're into, or just getting into, Prime can help you get closer to it. Visit Amazon.com forward slash Prime to sign up. From movies and music, to passions and podcasts. It's on Prime. This is DJ 9 a.m., baby, and I'm a carefree black girl. Hey, guys, you are now tuning in to the Carefree Black Girl podcast, where we're discussing everything carefree, black, and girl. This month, we're celebrating Black Girl Magic 2.0, and we have someone that's killing it in her field. Who better else to introduce herself than the one and only? Yams, Richard Dean Yams Barty. I'm here at the podcast, second episode with the lovely ladies. Um, I'm looking forward to what you guys have to say. Mm-hmm. She's a Scorpio, guys, so keep that in mind. <laughs> Don't do this. Don't do right? this. Same. But Scorpios be great. All right. Speaking of Black Girl Magic 2.0, um, what do y'all think about Cardi? She out I here love killing her. it. Yo, her she, glow up is real. Isn't Cardi it? is so bad. I love her. Oh, she Paper Magazine actually just wrote an article about her being the breakout star for New York Fashion Week, mm-hmm. which I totally agree. I totally agree. I love her um, new style. She's working with Mikey, which is actually Kiki Palmer stylist. Everybody is but obviously I'm, knows about Kiki Palmer. I don't know. I'm not a really, I'm not a big fan of Kiki right now. I'm not a big Why? fan. Why? Me neither. Uh, she's Me neither. doing a, a lot of buffoonery. Me neither. It is. Wait, 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 wait. And Run I feel back. like she's super smart and she's trying to be ghetto and that just, that's just, it's just, irritating at first the I gag felt like, is like what what is the gag girl at first i felt like kiki was trying too hard um trying to find herself i felt like she was trying to be very new york city there's certain mm. people i don't want to name them but there are certain people that i felt like she was trying to be like trying to have their style trying to go off them um then she went on wendy williams did you guys mm-hmm. watch yeah. that wendy williams episode i love that episode um it Can you made explain me, to me what the episode was the yeah. episode was about well wendy was bashing her her upon the Trey Songs thing. Did you hear yeah, about I the, know Trey the Trey Songs, Songs thing? Things. So Wendy was talking about that as a hot topic before before Kiki Palmer came on. She came on the show and she explained herself. Um, I didn't necessarily, it wasn't the best explanation or whatever, but I respected how Kiki came on that show and she held her own. And I felt like that made me respect her more as a person. Everybody's personality isn't going to be what you like. Right. But a person that is true to them and that is them, I'm going to respect you more. I might not like it, but if it's that's you, you don't have any choice but to accept it. And I felt like watching that interview that she did on Wendy Williams, I was like, you know what, that's just Kiki. And she was like, I'm growing up. And everybody is like, they want me to be that child. And we seen Kiki on Akila and the Bee and saw her right. as a little girl. And she's just like, I'm a grown woman now, I'm growing up. And it might be a little extra for us, which at times I do think it is, but... I respected her more from that interview. And I was like, you know, she just, maybe that is just her. Maybe she is a little extra. Right. I still don't like the visual album that she dropped. I didn't even know. See, you ain't even know about it. Next. Next. All right. All right. But Cardi, she doing her thing. Yeah. So I'll say that. Um, She's what you're supposed to do when you go and get a new body. She's not working in retail store, stores, girls, okay? she that well, I'm just putting that out there. Because y'all be getting these bodies and these butts and still be working in T-Mobile. It don't make no sense. Oh, wow. Do you is like it, her boobs? Is this the but roaster? I like her boobs. I'm just saying that I respect her so much because she got her body done. She, you know, she glue like, she really grew and glowed up. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's what, that's what you're supposed to do when you're investing thousands of dollars into your ass you are Same. the the yeah. article was also talking about how she wanted to be respected as a fashion icon now because a lot of people um with her 
her body and the way she dresses as far as the body suits and a lot of people they're always going to think that she's slut or whatever she does right. they're going to always compare it to her background right. and always have that mindset and she was just like no I still want to be fashionable um and Gypsy Sport the designer he named her his muse for this year which I love that I right. love that she's taken that path and that people are respecting her and people she is inspirational i love she cardi is. and just how we were talking about kiki palmer and how some people don't like cardi and some people can't take cardi but cardi is her so you, cardi you don't is her. And you don't have any choice but to respect it and another thing i like about her is that like she's kind of like me whereas she does she's she's um budget friendly but like still make it cute because I feel mm. like the people out here be trying to flex all the time. And I'm just like, but girl, like you putting everything on a credit card, like when you get a little bit older, like you're going to wish that you like didn't buy that. And like also people like, again, they do it for the likes or oh, some people, not everybody. But I just like the fact that she's like, I'm cute as shit. And this was $30 from Fashion Nova. Mm -hmm. And I'm cute. Like, I don't know. I just really like that about her because I can only imagine. She's, she's a real person. She's, yeah, she's a real person. She yeah, she, no, she is. And I like it mm -hmm. a lot. So but everybody, some people like the higher end things. And that doesn't necessarily mean, you know, they're doing it for other people. We were just having that conversation. We were just talking about Juicy Couture for Urban Outfitters and how those sweatsuits are $220. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm. I'll do it. I'll do it. But mm. it's not for other people. Everybody just has their own niche. You know, yeah. Fashion Nova and things like that, they are good. As long as it's for you, some people can buy the $200 pieces and the $1,000 pieces, and that's just what they like. It's not – everybody don't do it for other people. Mm -hmm. I'm materialistic. <laughs> I um, You're a Virgo. Yeah, I'm a Virgo. <laughs> I'm materialistic, but it's for me. Right. You know, but I think I in the limelight, that's not that common, makes though. Makes me happy, yeah. Cause like that's the thing like for her to be on Love and Hip Hop and then for her to have mixtapes for her to be, um, constantly photographed. I think that's why I appreciate it. Cause like I feel like and again like that's her job. You know when you're a personality when you take on that role you're supposed to be shown in a certain light. Mm -hmm. And I think a lot of times people do associate with what they have with money and like oh like their outfit must be a lot right. of money. So the fact that she's like transparent about it and honest is what I appreciate the most just because that's again not it's fresh. It's not you don't really see that a lot. Yes, it is and, fresh. And in in the social light. She's so. going to be around for a long time because of that I think because she's genuine to her. Um but it just always goes with your personality and the stylist who you you work with my keep does great for her um what he's doing for kiki and cardi they're totally different cardi it works and he doing his thing but I agree. you know mm -hmm. it just all depends just like there's other stylists out here right now um abe samuel zarina Akers. speaking of black girl magic those are two african girl stylists right now that are killing it zarina Akers, she's a personal stylist for beyonce you know beyonce wouldn't go to my keep who's styling kiki and cardi i think it's just all to an individual and if you're being you we just we're gonna love it you know mm -hmm. we don't have any choice um beyonce what about beyonce at the grammy <sighs> first of all i loved all her outfits oh that red I like that red even and that the plunging. white even oh. the white mm -hmm. everything she's just gorgeous mm -hmm. everything beyonce does is, is amazing she does no wrong she, I think like she literally looks does well on her it does yeah, yeah. very she what do we feel me about that's the even pregnancy possible. and um, i'm excited for her I will say that a lot of people, or just the conversation that I've been having with people in my circle, um, it gives an opportunity for black women, again, to kind of have the the space to talk about fertility. Mm -hmm. And, like, I mean, her being transparent about her miscarriage and then, like, some people um, speculating if this was in vitro and, like, you know, that, the, that I think her being pregnant and then showing it the way that she did with those photos it opened up a lot of doors for a good conversation but to be had can we I also kind of disagree really mm -hmm. i did not want her to open up like really that. Me neither. because she didn't do it the first she time she didn't do it the f i just feel like one thing i love about beyonce is that she's so private like yep. she gives you her art and that's what but she the thing about her privacy is that she chooses when she's going to give that's it why i get that but i just feel like i feel like it kind of was a it just she didn't have to. But after, like she felt like it was she, she needed to she prove needed herself. To prove oh, it hurt her when people were saying yeah, that it that yeah, wasn't right. her child. Yep. Like it and was also a fake it's clearly baby her bump. child. Yeah. So that's why she did that. You also have to think like after lemonade, like lemonade in itself was, I think, a side of Beyonce that we've never seen as far as like opening up and kind of like sharing her house life. Regardless of people think it was like dramatized or whatever. Like after that album, I again I don't know Beyonce, but she did so it I can only. Art. 
It's, it's yeah, and that's why I think you know, she's continuing different. with that, though. I feel like those photos were done intentionally. That visual, I don't know if, I don't even know if it was a set of visuals, but the one where she was like in the water, all of those things. I feel like she's oh, yeah. really trying to show herself no, in no. a different light. Them water pictures, they um, were gorgeous. Beautiful. I can't wait to get oh pregnant. I'm holding God. my breath. I'm just, under them. My thing <laughs> under is, the water. I just hope that she has a photo book of. Um, pregnancy photos when she was pregnant with Blue that we just haven't seen. No, she does. Right. No, I she mean, does. she, she does. does release some, and that's what I'm just like, B, you didn't have to. You didn't I think that's to. what it was. I feel like you everything didn't have she's to. done up to this point has been perfect, carefully planned, carefully executed, and then now it's kind of like she's trying to prove and go too hard. I still love Beyonce. She can do no wrong. Go too but, hard, though. Yeah, I think I she's know, excited girl. for the she first time. I think time. she is. A, because also, you, y'all got to forget, though, she, her first child was a miscarriage. That's what I'm saying. Like, and I got, think also her making the choice to not share blue as much as she did was kind of a defense mechanism. Exactly. Because, like, she wanted that baby and she lost it and she couldn't do anything about it. Exactly. Her. Only, it's only, okay, I understand I, yeah, that. I understand it's only that because the whole world said that Beyonce did not carry blue. I don't think reason. that I think it came after I think she's a different person yeah and I think honestly shop Amazon for last minute gifts great deals for everyone on your list gifts for mom and gifts for dad even for your sister and your brother Chad ah shoot we didn't realize we were supposed to get a gift for our dog walker guy we almost forgot about our dentist Dr. Kerr we didn't expect to get a gift from her or our cousin I forget his name he got us something nice better reciprocate for last like I still listen to Lemonade like three times a week, and like I I really That's cannot true. think of a time where she's sat down with people who write, like help her write her music and been so like let me into your house and like let me hear about the things that you go through with your relationship because I feel like it's really easy to like you know how the things that I'm not God. Like, I don't know if you saw her visuals. Or oh, God is, yeah. God is God, God is, I am not. Yeah, like, all of those things. I think she's really trying to break down the idea that people just keep holding her up, and she doesn't want to be there anymore. Mm, and yeah. I think that we should also give her that option to kind of come down a little bit if she doesn't want to be held in such a high light. Mm-hmm. Like, if she, like, it, people put their pregnancy photos on the internet all the time now. Yeah. So if she wants to join yeah. that community. But that's what made her different, that she didn't. Yeah. I, don't, yeah. That, I just... Don't get me wrong, I appreciate it that, like, um, one of them is becoming my screensaver on my computer, but <laughs> it's just like, you know, I kind of feel like I'm her daughter. Like, Ma, you letting too many people into our house right now. I like, think it's joy, though. I think she's really happy. She Going look, back, but she looks so beautiful. She That's does, like, she though. So beautiful. She could have did the cliche magazine cover, and then y'all would have called it cliche. That's true. Yeah. It's really a damn if you do, damn if you don't with Beyonce. Like, <laughs> she's wrong no matter what she does, though. Going back to this whole Grammy thing, listen, on, on Ivy's tip about how when Beyonce does something, it feels like she's doing it for all of us. I felt slighted when she did not win this award that she rightfully deserved. How she Adele rightfully Godfrey. deserved, but you know what? I appreciate Adele for acknowledging that she did not deserve that award. <laughs> but here's my thing, though, about the Adele thing. So let's, let's rewind back to how Beyonce didn't win the award. And it really kind of goes into this idea how the Grammys is run. We don't know exactly who's on the Grammy committee, and, that, and that's definitely to preserve their privacy because people on the internet are, are crazy and they'll get run no, up I on. I just want to know if there's a you know someone that looks like me on the Grammy committee. Honestly, though, honestly, probably not. Like but I really wasn't do. Wasn't there a thing that said if y'all want to change the Grammys and who are winning, then get on the committee? What, yeah, there was something that. But I'm pretty Goldberg sure is on the committee. Who? Whoopi Goldberg. Really? Why is she on that committee? Is, is she listen to music? No. I'm not really sure though, but it's it's more so when you think Grammys, you talk about traditional instrumentation, playing chords. Like that's how they look at music. Mm-hmm. So anytime mm-hmm. you come in with something that is digitized or it's too avant garde, it's beyond them and what Beyonce has been doing with mixing genres and the way that she does it's hard for those people to see it as classical music you know there's not there's you don't necessarily 
even though there might be somebody playing an instrument, you don't hear it the way that you would hear uh, um, an old 70s band. So there is, there's that too. There's that disconnect where it's the people that are there, they may be 50, 60 plus, and they have their idea of music and what it's supposed to be, which is why you would see like a Bruno Mars be so held high in regard because of his, his style album was amazing. of music yeah. yeah, and the musicality of it. So that's what, when you think Grammys, you have to think that. You can't think necessarily trap music unless somebody is coming and doing their trap lyrics on a live band all the time. So then, yeah, then it's different. So then you're saying that the Grammys respects people who are considered musicians More versus, organic. versus people who are considered performers. Yes. Okay. Beyonce is all But Taylor that. Swift is a hot mess, and I don't know what she be doing. Girl, let's neither here nor there. <laughs> no, because no, because she be, <laughs> no, because she be the one winning. I'm sorry, I really just no. But like, her. listen. But what does she do then? If she winning the Grammys over Beyonce, what what does she be doing? Because she won previously. You know what I'm trying to say? Like that whatever album won her, her it's numbers. The last album that Taylor Swift had won over people who should have. One, in my opinion. Yeah. So they I give agree. her all these Grammys. It, what do she play? What so, do then, she... so then, yeah, I'm just going to ask you then because Whoopi Goldberg be on the, on the committee. So then do you do you still believe then that race plays a part? Because Taylor got it over Kendrick. Adele got it over Beyonce. And I was going to read a segment from an NPR article that kind of also coincides with my frustration towards Adele. But I guess I want to ask you, do you feel, how much of, how much do you feel race plays a part in who gets chosen over what? For these specific award categories, yeah, because she got urban. I, I think we're just patronizing, in my opinion. But. I, agree. I think race race plays a part in everything in America. Period. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You can't get away from that. Whether you you going down to the store and you want to buy something exactly. from Bodega, like you know, like is yeah. is is always there. But again, like Kendrick and all of these people in the past seven to ten years that you're talking about, their style is innovation. So when you put it against a Beck, right, or a Taylor Swift or whatever it is, when you take those vocals out of it and you listen to the core progression and the musicality behind it, there's people playing those instruments. When you hear something like a Migos, right? We love Migos. Everybody love loves Migos. <laughs> but that's different. You understand what I'm saying? There's still a the melody there, but it's not traditional musicality. So when people think about the Grammys, I don't think they really understand what the structure is. That's fair to say. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I agree. Is. Yeah. And the, well, we need to get our kids in orchestra. <laughs> yeah. But Billboard, if you yeah. think about Billboard Music Awards, that's different because right. that is dealing with what's charting, regardless of mm. you know what the musicality. That's a good is. way to look at it. Yeah. So mm-hmm. Rihanna would win. You know what she I'm got, saying? She got mm, dumb. She got Yo, her in that Grammy. flask? Yes. Yeah. I don't <laughs> I blame her at all. Sitting right there, getting drunk and happy. But was time. Anti really that good? Yes. What do you mean, girl? What? Anti mm. was. You didn't fuck with Anti? No, no. I'm I'm just asking, like, because I like the album, but that's not something I listen to. I'm, I probably listen to, like, Sex With Me. Cause I, I think really... Anti is a mood setter. Mm. It's a mood setter. It is a gr- it's it's a great album. I like love it was, it, but it's a mood setter. Like I mean, I'm comparing it to her old her old albums. Like I still listen to girl um good girl gone bad. Like that's less experimental. Yeah, see, I think that's mm. why. See, but when you're talking about music and you talk about anti, she's all over the place mm-hmm. genre wise, right? And she's doing what she wants to do as an artist, right. which would make it harder for somebody to be able to put it in a box and give you an award. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Right. Don't get me wrong. Like, I liked Anti. I like, but I just, I had to think, like, I haven't listened to an Anti song besides Sex With Me That I'll Come In A Club in so long. Like, but, but, I guess, yeah. but I don't know. Where I, Beyonce, like, Lemonade. I go to on Love Drought is my mother. Oh, me too. Love Drought I've been and saying All that shit Night this and Sandcastle. Oh Sandcastle. That, do you and think? That part of the, do you think you like that album because you're African American? Anti mm. or um, no? Beyonce's oh, Lemonade, Lemonade. Do you feel Lemonade like it resonates was not with my you? My favorite Beyonce album. What's your favorite mm. Beyonce? My favorite Beyonce. Please album. say four because she went off on four. See, mm, one plus I one. No. 
I don't really one agree. plus one. I don't know, guys. Made me want to have some kids. I think self titled. I think self titled. Self titled is from yo, because I stopped. I stopped being a Beyonce yeah. fan to be honest after her second. I <laughs> wish I could see the Dodgers face right room. now. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I'm, but I'm gonna be upfront with it though. Look, yeah. I didn't start becoming a Beyonce fan again for real until self titled came out because I felt like Beyonce wasn't. Felt self titled for me was Beyonce finally taking herself seriously and yeah. being mm. a human for us. You didn't think four and was her? No, girl, I what? didn't. I'm sorry, no, I, I don't. Four. I love Ford. I do. Ford that was, was my favorite Ford album. Ford was cute. It but was. self-titled was like, I'm not playing anymore. No, I'm here. I'm not great. going nowhere. But then she also had the, um, she did the Jay-Z basically, right? And then she has her own label. And she right. knows she's able to make this music that she's been wanting to make all this right. time. But so there's if, that too. But if we're going to talk about a real black album, we got to go to Solange. Because don't get me wrong, Lemonade was was dope. Still listen to it. But when I'm in my empowerment feeling like a good black woman i put a seat on the table oh i want to i want to put oh. a pin in that with solange at though. the table <laughs> oh i see <laughs> i'm <laughs> sitting though that's all that matters <laughs> i want to go i want to put a pin on that because we're gonna talk about solange but i want to talk about adele responding the way that she did towards beyonce winning taking beyonce i'm gonna let it go okay because i love adele i do love adele 25 was my jam but like i never listened to i've never album. listened to that album i like I hello but i think i think my frustration <laughs> with it my frustration with it is that <laughs> men i listen <laughs> i think i think as far as perhaps white allyship if you can mm-hmm. even call it that i feel like adele was gracious in acknowledging the fact that lemonade inspired and changed people the way 25 just doesn't inherently mm-hmm. but i it does mm, i don't know maybe this is just me trying to find something wrong with it or maybe i just kind of felt like she was patronizing in the way that she i okay. agree thank my you black wait, 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 my, no. okay but the part where she talked that about her but let's wait, go back. i agree with wait, that but can I, I do yeah brie okay so i understand this but i think people are really kind of overlooking the cultural context I get it because Adele, I she's really, not American. And I, and, and I, and I think like, okay, I'm a sap. I don't know if y'all know that. I cry about everything. Yo, that Kevin, okay. There's a, there's a commercial with a little boy on, um, on TV and like Kevin Durant comes in and like surprises the little black boy. I cry. I cry at everything. Okay. Y'all. But at the Grammys, when Adele was giving her I speech cried. to be on, I cried like I knew I them. Did. I really did because I appreciate it. I really and appreciate I, I didn't Adele feel it. I, I didn't feel, and you. I think Yam, Yams and I are here. I, think, like, but I, I feel she, like she knew what was coming. I okay. I, I'm not saying that mm-hmm. I don't think she she doesn't love Beyonce and right. she's not a fan. I think she's a very smart woman and she knows that mm-hmm. if she didn't do what she did, there would have been a problem. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I feel Period. like a simple thank y'all for this award. Shout out to Beyonce for Lemonade though because that album was album of the year to me. But let me say my thank yous and keep it moving. A but simple I, shout out would have did it for me. But I think she was trying to, and again, I could be, I could be totally wrong, but I think she was trying to um, connect the dots for the people who missed how important Lemonade was to black women. Yeah, no. Like, I, I think, and again, like, people keep talking about the way that she said, and I get it, it could have come off really bad taste yeah, to certain people. Friends. No, no, I, I, yeah, I, I get how that sounded bad, but I think she was really, really, for other people in that room that don't got a quote-unquote black friend, I think she was trying to connect the dots for them for what that album meant to so many black women. Like, and I and I think, again, that's a culture component to that, because in the UK, it's more class than race. Yeah. They have, um, they're, they're, basically society separated more by class than by race in the states so i really do think that when like she said when she heard destiny's child for the first time it blew her mind i really do think that it was genuine i yeah, i don't too. i don't think yeah that. it's genuine but it's also business mm. Mm. you gotta remember that too she's not stupid so i get it but again like why does adele have to tell that story for a black woman yeah that's mm. another thing why does she have to do that which is that's why i true. asked you do you think you like lemonade because you are African American? Then if it's only resonating with a large part of African American listeners, then maybe that's where it caps off. Mm -hmm. Do you know anybody outside of yourselves and your friends and your family that was just really like in real life now, not online. I'm talking about where they walking down the street. Like, yes, you know what I'm saying? Like, 
I don't have I don't like, think they got it. I think they were confused. I think that I people like, turned on the visual album and they were like, okay, I don't get this. What is this? And then I, turned it off. I don't think... So to answer your question, to be honest, no, I don't. And that's a good point. I didn't think about so it that way. So that's why she didn't win. Yeah. I mean, eliminate the description. That, I'm just... You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm just here to, to, to be just, the barrier where you understand, like, both sides of it. Like, yes, you know, we feel like she should have won. She... All the visuals, you know what I'm saying? She definitely works harder, which is why Adele would be like, well, what the fuck does she have to do to Mm -hmm. win album of the year? She busts her ass. Mm -hmm. You know, she's a Virgo. She works (laughs) hard. You know what I'm saying? So she's doing all that she can do, but who is she reaching? Mm. Half of that stuff doesn't hit Billboard. Can y'all say the same for Solange, though? No. Because I feel like Solange is more so in your face, like, this is for black I don't understand. People. Can you say it again? Like, what do you mean? Do you say the same for someone? Because you're like, um, this album is only reaching black people, which I don't, I don't agree. Like, I feel like a lot, I mean, they probably not, maybe have not understood like how we understood it, but I feel like there's tons of white people that love this album and that appreciate it. I feel like Solange was more so for this is for black people. But so was Lemonade. Lem- That's lemonade. what I'm saying. Lemonade so where are these, these listen, white people get, that, lemonade that was like very, the Lemonade? I mean, I was oh, true. Lemonade was very for? explicit no, about the fact that it was meant I, for black women. Like, it didn't even try to hide that. It was like, this is for black The difference is that Solange is kind of like more like in your face about it because Solange don't care about nobody. No, but I went to the tour and like the people all sitting next to me, there was like a group of white girls and they was getting it and they was having for, fun. Um, for Beyonce. For formation. Yeah, yeah. Formation. But, that's but that's, No, but the thing is, like, but just because they like to, like, I don't know, get drunk and dance to it, like, they, they didn't feel what we felt. Like, I, and I do, that's, that's why I'm feeling, they like, they I'm feeling your relate point. To that. They don't get, they maybe, don't. Maybe the female narrative. This episode is brought to you by Undeniably Dairy. Dairy farmers are more than farmers. They're climate caretakers. They see water as a precious resource. Most farmers recycle water up to four times, from chilling the milk to irrigating the crops. And some even use technology to turn manure into renewable energy. To learn more about what dairy farmers are doing to make their farms more sustainable, visit usdairy.com. But, but they how don't... deep does that really... And then she made that album for us. Mm-hmm. Those visuals are for us. Yes, mm-hmm. though, people overlook the formation video so much still. Like, I had to explain that to some of, like, um, the white people... I, that I do interact with or like acquaintances, they didn't get it. They were like, the cop car was kind of unnecessary. Oh, well, okay. Well, you missed it. My, well, you missed it all. My, you missed um, it. A friend, he's actually a black male. He said when lemonade came out, how he described it. And I loved it. It was perfect. He said, lemonade is a call to the complexity of black women. Mm-hmm. I yeah. would agree with that. I think yeah. that was perfect. I think it was a perfect summary of that album. I love the word complex, first of all, because the <laughs> world is so complex. It's so deep and it's a lot going on. And I just think yeah. Lemonade was about that. I always say that the black race has a lot of levels to it. And black women, even all of us sitting here, we're all different. We all have different things going on in life. Different. We're just on different levels. All of us. Mm-hmm. We're complex. Mm-hmm. Lemonade was a call to that. I love that. Mm-hmm. I think on that tip of complex, I think my issue then with Adele is that um, there's a very complex relationship between black women and white women, especially mm-hmm. in America. And when Adele Call said to Beyonce, I want you to be my mommy, I was like, no. Like, I could have almost been on board with what she was saying up until that point. Mm-hmm. So I want to read, like, a quick segment from an NPR article and then, like, kind of, like, ask y'all a question. So what happened is, is that both Adele and then another singer named Faith Hill had said, I know you're old. Faith Hill had said, I know that you're older than me, but I would like for you to be my mom too. Even though I can be old. I am old Wait, enough Faith to be Hill is younger than Beyonce? No, yeah. she's older. She's she older. Saying, like, even though I'm old oh, enough to be I'm older, mom. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Because. <laughs> <laughs> so in this, um, and so NPR Code Switch did an article in which it said, like, Beyonce is not your mommy, right? And in the article, one segment that kind of at least struck me kind of harkens back to the mammy caricature that, that yes, plagues right, black women even right. to this day. Mm-hmm. Um, it is a narrative that falls in the footsteps of, of exemplary black mothers, like the first lady, Michelle Obama, the self-styled, the self-styled mom in chief who shaped her legacy in the White House around her role as a working mother dedicated to the concerns of American children. Actress Jada Pinkett Smith, who regularly expounds on the non-traditional but dedicated parenting style, and the chief executive, Shonda Rhimes, who often has waxed poetic 
about her role as a mother shaping the daughters who will grow up to be powerful women. And later the article says we're depicted as either lazy, inept Jezebels who have accidentally gotten knocked up by men who either care for not about us or our children or the invisible in the parenting debate altogether worth talking to only when pathology or tragedy becomes a concern. So I just, I mean, it goes back to Adele is a well-meaning white woman, but well-meaning can still be dangerous. Dangerous, right. Well-meaning can still be dangerous. And so the, My I mom just, says the road to hell is paved with good intentions, so. Right. I don't know if that kind of so, connected, but. So then real, the question uh, I want to <laughs> ask is that despite the fact that Adele, for all intent and purpose, is kind of divorced from America's complex relationship with race, do you feel that she was still like, what was she doing? Do you think that she, it was okay and that she meant no harm by saying that I wanted Beyonce to be her mommy? And it does kind of seem patronizing because Adele's on this stage where Beyonce should have been, in my opinion. And Beyonce just has, she has no choice but to be gracious. She can't be like, oh, fuck Adele. Who the fuck she thinks she's talking to? She had no choice but to be gracious because it would have made her look so, like a sore loser and would have made her look unprofessional and inappropriate. It was kind of like, Adele, you doing too much. It was, <laughs> honestly. And I know that she was trying I not to. I appreciate it, though. Okay. I did. You still appreciate it despite? I mean, now I'm listening and I'm like, okay, I'm I'm hearing, but I can't change my original feeling from when I heard it. I'm just like. You always change your feeling. That's what I'm saying. It was I don't sweet. know. It was I sweet. Just, because I, I wanted really... to be on board with this so bad and I was trying to find a way, but I couldn't do it. I couldn't do it. I think the mother's statement was just. Too much. Something to say. I think she felt, you know, like she was trying to console her. Like, mm-hmm. I think that's what it was. Like, she was pregnant. She's pregnant. She mentioned her being pregnant and not knowing she was pregnant last time she was on stage. See, like, all that's... that, like, you running shit down. Like, I'm just like, okay, like, when are you going to be done already? Cause... No, but I think it, I think that's another point to bring out, though. Like, she kind of, her, her thank you speech or whatever it was, she talked about how it was coming full circle to her and how, like, you know, when she took the award for 21, she um, was pregnant and didn't know. And then since then, like, now she's back four years later, five years later, she has a child, all this stuff. So I think I think she was trying to make um, pregnancy or being a mother, motherhood, like not a theme of her thank you, but like to try to connect some kind of tie to the performance that Beyonce just had that night. Right. And then from there kind of spewed. Now, I didn't think about like, you know, black feminist thought and all the, you know, the theories that you just brought up, which again, hearing it, it kind of does hit a nerve. Um. I think it's really unfortunate, though, how, like, I did overlook that. And then it makes me think about, like, how often it's done, you oh, know, yeah. so under so underlying. Um, so to to be honest, not that I don't appreciate it as much, because, again, like I said, I cried. I thought it was beautiful. Um, I think th- this is another opportunity, another channel to educate people on, like, why black women aren't your mother like what the hell like Like, yeah i just like i didn't even think of it that way but like yeah like girl what are you it's mm. like who asked you for this i should yeah and i and i think again yeah like again me being someone who studies that i guess i should have picked it up i totally didn't so again it's i guess uh opportunity for people to be more aware i think think that i believe that adele believes that she was well-meaning but just the whole that the comment was just so what do you yeah it on? makes me think if beyonce even picked up on it because like i said i just like just now when you write that article that's when i picked up on it like i totally i did mean it. and beyonce was like no the entire speech like you don't have to do this please stop you i beg of you she looked so beautiful <laughs> First, I want to talk about, have you guys seen the new Vogue cover? It's been like, I know um, Kendall's on it, the the face for like plus size girls. I think her name is like Ashley something. Graham. Graham. Um, it's all these beautiful like shades. It's supposed to be the diversity of women, but well, it's, they're like hugging, right? No, like, yeah, they're hugging, but it's there's no. I see no. I, I saw no girl that looked like me. I saw I not even your, not even your shade. I'm I'm being sarcastic, but like I'm because you know 
in my head I'm dark skinned. So <laughs> I saw no girl that, you know, <laughs> looked like me. Like, there was no black girls, let's be real, on that cover. Uh, they had the plus size girl, which wasn't really a plus size to me, in my opinion. Then they had, like, all these light shades. So I'm just trying to figure out, did they just forget the black girl or no, was it intentional? I think also if you look at the cover and look at their faces, very, very European features. Like, down to the nose. It's almost like when you zoom into the face, you and if you just, like, put a black and white um, filter, filter on the photo, right. their face would look the same. So what were they really trying to grasp as far as, like, having a quote-unquote diversity issue, you know? I don't know, but I didn't like it. Even how we were just talking about Africa and how Africa is so divided and then there's so many, you know, mm-hmm, Africa mm-hmm. is separate. Uh, you could say that's a diversity shoot. Uh, South Africa, North Africa, West Africa, East I, Africa, but they don't do that. They're scared of that, I think. I think definitely, at least uh, in the West, there's still this very large disparity about appreciating dark skin beauty or beauty that doesn't, um, or beauty that does not inherently, uh, my bad, y'all, or beauty that does not uh, inherently see outside of Eurocentric uh, ideals. Um, Mm -hmm. And so, like, I think it's definitely taken a lot of push and a lot of kind of movers and shakers to finally get white America to look at black people as beyond, you know, the light-skinned black girl in the one movie or whatever. With the curly hair. With the the curly hair, yeah. The thin nose, the tiny set of lips. No, it's just, they do it, it's intentional. Yeah, it's intentional. Listen, I want to see a girl that like me. Big ass lips, nice ass. (laughs) Big big titties. titties. Oh just God. milky but it's it's definitely oh still God. this issue we're having in which i think to a degree and let me know if y'all disagree right. that we're we want white america to appreciate us and to accept this in i don't need them to appreciate me or accept me because listen i accept me first of all, they can't relate because they not i think that's our problem we're always trying to get them to accept us yeah that that's, we need to stop yes. that we need to learn how you know what they're not gonna accept us they don't have to they need to learn how to get our acceptance if I mean, we want to be real Okay, so I but. get, I understand the whole like you know n- not looking for acceptance or whatever, but then don't call it a fucking diversity shoot. Call right. it what it is. Okay, different shades of European women standing next to each other. <laughs> yeah, like, don't don't call it what it isn't. Like that's just my thing. Like I don't, I don't know about y'all, but me and my friends we don't get that close in the picture. You're a little too close to me. Back up. They was a little too hugged up for me. We we kind of spoke about that in the first episode, but that's just another thing that I would love to touch upon. Women in general and black women, people, period, in this world, in this saturated world, like, I would just love for everyone to be comfortable with themselves mm-hmm. and unapologetically themselves. Mm-hmm. Like, just do you. Remember, remember when we was talking about, like, your dreams and the second grade and kindergarten and mm-hmm. what you wanted to do and still having that dream? Like, I just feel like the way the world is and just everything today is just so compared and trying to be this or trying to be th- Even how they, with the white girls and all the memes and how they be like, the gays get the, the white girls are copying the gays who copy the black girls. Like... Speaking. It's just too much of people trying to be other people and people trying to put on for other people. Like, I would just love, which is one of my purposes in life, to spread that. Just be you. Just do you. So be comfortable with yourself. Right. So yeah. you don't, you don't, you don't, specifically being in New York, you don't enjoy when it's a, a multi culty, you know, like the the cultural pot like you don't like that no, like say, no i mean i do i do and i i do but still being comfortable in yourself i just feel like there's so many people lost and they don't know how to be themselves or some so many people like they look at kylie and they're trying to be kylie kylie and jenner so annoying. and they're not Ugh. themselves but you know kylie I mean? is they over here trying to be, be heather themselves. sanders so who are you trying to be exactly. are you trying to be heather sanders are you trying to be I'm kylie saying. or like and and that goes back to when we we were speaking about cardi and why cardi is i feel like she's going to be around a long time and why you can't help but love her because she's her right and that's why i appreciate her and i have I, to piggyback on that because we're talking about cardi b right and then we mentioned kylie jenner Two different age range, just both had work done to their body. Mm-hmm. But we say that one person 
we accept them maybe because they didn't touch their face. And then Kylie Jenner, you know, she's trying to be something or people are trying to be awful. her. But, but Kylie doesn't. But Cardi would be like, yeah, I got my titties done. I got my ass done because I wanted to da 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 Kylie would... She, she hides it. Wait, hold on. I Rewind back, though. She, she's a young girl. Who's this the is we, not, though? This is just... Huh? Who's the we, though, in your sentence? Are you talking about black people or, like, just women? I, just women. Anybody that criticizes anybody that gets plastic surgery. Let's talk oh, about see, how Kylie Jenner okay, looked to be honest, before she got that it, surgery. My, my I wrist... I respect her if she was like, shit, I wanted to be my, like him. I wanted to look like my sisters. I had to do what I had to do. My riff with her is has shit to do with her body. Yeah. It has to do with the taking of what um, black women have done and making it quote unquote mainstream. Um, this thing where her and her sisters um, kind of take things and rebrand them as they're the ones who created them. Boxer um, I think braids. it's is it them it's, that's doing that or is no, it but, the press? No, the but press. that's no, but they it's don't. The but press. but, press. but press. the thing with that is that they don't speak out against it. Like it's literally if you just watch the projection of this family, like shout out to Chris because she be getting the money, she be getting coins, whatever. But like the way that they continuously step on other black women, people don't know who the fuck Heather Sanders is. But I'm telling y'all. Heather Sanders is what inspired me. all of them. It, no, Kylie. That's like they're the same. Like, they, they're all and then, friends. I know, and I, that's what yeah. I'm saying. I understand that too, and that's the thing. Like it just comes to a place like you have to be more. I don't know. If genuine so is the word. Shout out to Chris and their marketing, and how about let's do that for ourselves and let's make moves. How they making moves and do what we got to do. Yeah, because when, them know when you we're say you want women. somebody, this is kind of like the started. Adele thing now. That, I, I feel like we give these people way too much responsibility and we want them to say something like they don't what have to. what what would you like to hear from the Kardashians or the Jenners? Like, but what I'm could they say to satisfy like... you to for it to be justified? I don't I don't think they need to say anything. I don't. Yeah, I agree. Like Kylie's honestly my least favorite because I just feel like. I don't know. It's just something in my heart. I just really can't get jiggy with. But I actually do like the Kardashian clan. I feel like they why? got... For well, why? For Kim, I feel like Kim got paid to be Kim. And that's what everybody wants to do. If somebody could give me millions of dollars just to live life, I'm all for it. Where do I sign up? So this whole like, oh, you know, you need a talent. She's really smart. And I feel like people don't give her that credit. She knows where to invest, what to do, how, like... I'm I'm a big Kim fan. I like. I mean, I do feel like they have Kim is the hand. only sister that I follow on Instagram. Yeah, me too. I don't, I don't follow, follow any of them. But, but honestly, Kim. well, going into fashion, I feel like all of them learned how to dress through Courtney. Courtney was always was dressing right. amazing. They like, all and have... she stayed her same like same face. You could you can you know yeah. she's the normal one, but. Kim is just, I don't know why Kim is my favorite. I just, like, respect it. I respect even, what she did. Even that goes to speak on the the poem that we watched earlier. Did you catch the 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 Kanye West black ex-girlfriend poem? No, it was that? Oh, you got to watch that. It's, it was a, I guess it was a real ex-girlfriend of Kanye no, West. No, she was a spoken it's word. word. It's a spoken it word. It wasn't real. No, She that, wasn't an ex-girlfriend. Mm-mm, it was a spoken word. Okay. okay. So it was a spoken word of... It was called Kanye West Black Ex Girlfriend, and it was just speak. It, it started off like she was like, "You look hungry. <laughs> you ain't had macaroni and cheese and fried chicken in a while. You ain't had a home cooked meal since show mama died." When Kim Kardashian mess up the lyrics to College Dropout, do you ignore it? Like how those white people used to mess up your name? Like it was just real. She, she it it was real, and I felt it. And Speak on, like, okay, Chloe. Chloe used to always be our favorite Kardashian, right? Nope. No. Can I yeah, she was. I'm no. just, I, I, have I don't have the energy to As talk she about. Was. She was. No. She I'm was like, because everybody thought, like, okay, she she's dealing with Lamar. And I just, she, she <laughs> seemed relatable. She, because she, she was relatable. so, like, opposed now to everything like, they uh, was doing. Now, Chloe, right. she's now, a dub. Right. Because me, I'm a person, like, if you doing you for you, and it's just like, whatever, I want to do this because this is what I want to do. Then we just going to respect it. But if you're doing it for other people and you're just being corny and now you're just corny, then you're just corny. If you're just doing it for you, I, and I feel like throughout her career, Kim has kept that. Even though 
we don't all relate to Kim or whatever. Kim to me does not have a personality. Like she obviously a, a personality, but right, a dry one. But like I said, she's the only one I follow on Instagram because Kim is just her. That's her. I think she Chloe probably and Kylie always have the, like that. the same kind of thing going on where it's like they have the hot sisters. Right, and they try to change. Yeah. And that's what I don't respect about them. But do they have a choice, that. really? No, they do, though. They do, though, because then it's, it's... I'm big on... I'd rather have a whole bunch of real people following me than a whole bunch of just anybody. Or people... I'd rather have, a, I'd rather have woke followers and people that can put me on to things and people that could teach me on to things but and you followers don't think of because their sisters are who they are like the pressure that you and i have is different they got millions of people following them saying stuff right. all day then but you then got then, then, then you, you got people on tv calling you ugly then you got you know then you feeling ugly like mm-hmm. if you feel some type of way are you not allowed to go and then change that so you could be able to live i'm not really within yourself plastic surgery honestly I just feel like be honest. I'm not against it. That's what I said. It's about uh, how you, right. how you don't follow deny up, it. How you follow up yeah. on it. Like, but I got, you gotta I remember, like, Shit, these people are sex. emotionally <laughs> fucked up. Uh, so but, for them now to come and say, it's like, okay, you've been watching me on TV for X amount of years. You know, I did something like right. now I got to come back out say and it. say some shit now. Like I, me, and my me cousins, again, that's hard too. Yeah, I mean, I understand, like, this whole conversation, but for me, it's just always been the way that they've treated black women publicly, Mm -hmm. Um, the way that they I kind of, like, turn into culture vultures, but then, like, when serious things happen in our community, they feel so detached. Mm -hmm. Um, I have a really hard problem, like, it would be different if they're an artist, because, like, we were talking about earlier, like, I, when I hear college dropout, when I hear graduation, when I hear late registration... I'm like, damn, this person died. Like, mm. even though Kanye West is still alive, but the person who made this music is no longer with us. It's so sad. And I think, and that's why I'm like, it's easier for me if they were artists to kind of feel what you're feeling. Mm. But they don't really make anything. But they're humans. No, I, no, and that's why, again, it's not about the public, it's not about the public surgery. Like, please, I totally, I can only imagine what that stress is and what that does to their mental health. I get all of that. But you don't got to be, like, they tweet some things sometimes. And again, like, this is a conversation that, could take like years of like going and finding receipts the way they've just been kind of so okay with the culture until serious things happen in our community and they scapegoat or they kind of do the the okay I guess that matters but this also matters too like I don't know they just ride the fence too much for me at least I know where Kanye stands and that's why I said he's like not the same person that's cool but then they date black men do you think is the responsibility of the black men to make them talk I get, you know what, I, who's I the responsible person that i'm that's what i'm just trying to understand maybe they black boyfriends say don't say anything because yeah. if you say something then it's going to be a problem do you i mean they have to have these conversations i guess I'm sure I, I wouldn't do. give them too much credit to say that they have the conversations it i just, really think when you have a certain amount of money it goes back to what we were talking about earlier about how when black people reach a certain level of success and they get a certain class level they forget certain things I really don't think it crosses their mind to be like, damn, let me sit down and explain to this girl that I'm dating what's going on right now and how this might be perceived by a woman of color, by a black woman. Like, I just don't think that they don't care. That conversation needs to be had before the relationship gets serious. If you're having it in the middle of the 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 relationship, you've messed up. Once you've had kids already, her saying that her kids. I think that's just people's impersonalities. Like, everybody is not the same people person and you just have to accept that everybody has different personalities just like separating real people from fake people like everybody is just different everybody is not meant to be official everybody is not meant to be real everybody is not meant to be woke and passionate about things Mm -hmm. there are gonna be some shallow ass people and just those there are people like that and definitely that's just the world and sometimes people like the kardashians and those families you just have to accept that that that's their purpose in life and that's what they're here for and sometimes you just have to be like damn I hate it and that they're not da, 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 da. and I wish that Kylie would be like bitches I got my lips done I need it to and now they look good right. I, and we would all be like yes bitch yes we would love that but because she just doesn't say anything but then you'd be like you know what maybe right, she uh-huh. just wasn't raised like that uh-huh. and maybe but, um, and, you know when she's from LA and she don't got the Rick York Ross and, confidence right. and exactly. we'd be like and, and me and, and my cousins what? we always talk about uh, with a lot of people, they need bitches like us in their life. 
we wish they had some real friends because we don't know who they circle is and they friends. We wish they had some real friends because it's not everybody who could be like, girl, if you just went out and was like, shit, yeah, I got a titty lift. My shit was a little saggy. What the fuck? Now they up. But going into like... It will be fine. Going into the friend segment and... Just like all right, when I thought about like I don't know if y'all saw that Hurt Bay um, yeah. video. No, but and explain it to me. So basically, so I'm like, it's basically a video of this girl and she's asking her ex boyfriend why did he cheat on her, right? So I'm watching it and like it was this uproar about. It. Honestly, it was regular shit to me. I see it mm-hmm. every day. I just feel like I didn't I didn't get the point and why it was such a big deal because. Some of the things he was saying, like, I think one remark was, you know, she had said, like, I came to your room, I saw you had a girl, I went back to my room and cried. Bitch. No, he told her to get out. You you gotta, see, he told her to get out. Oh, yeah, out. he told her to get out. Which and I, This is after they broke up. No, they're like, together. They're together. They're together. My whole thing is, where are your friends? And, and, you know, and I get, okay, where so. Where are your, get out. No, I get all of that whole, like, where are your friends? Get out and go where? I'm confused. It's your parents, everybody, like I just said, everybody's not the same. Mm-hmm. And you have, and sometimes you have to sit and realize complexities of black women. We're it's different. Co- no, but the thing about it, though, about the friends thing, it's also very different when you're in a kind of love. That you love the person more than you love the, yourself, and that's what I was gonna. That's and dangerous. I think no, but and again, that so, can't be happening. And yeah, that's, that's no, but I mean, let's be real think, though. But do you let, think that was her problem? She was loving no, him. No, let me tell. Oh. I, I let's be real. Like uh, to be a hundred percent honest, I used to be her. And I mean, the relationship was like for five years. And like going back now, obviously I was young, and I didn't love myself. Um, going back now, I can see it clear as day. I loved him more than I loved myself. I would have done anything for this man. I would have, no, honestly, like it was the kind of love that is, again, it's dangerous. It's unhealthy. And I think that when we have these conversations about like, oh, where were her friends? Like she didn't respect herself. I I saw people on the timeline talking really crazy about her and I didn't. Every girl is, is, is that girl. That's why I didn't understand the uproar because it's just like, we all have been her. But my whole thing is like not no Virgos. Well, like <laughs> not I've been her to an extent on some like I've taken back a cheater. Has he done it blatantly in my face like get out? No. He I, I, I mean I don't know how that would that conversation would go because before the get out, my, my it would have been cup yeah. No, you know. but I'm just saying though, like we can we can ask all these questions, but at the end of the day, like it's the situation's pretty clear. Like Again, when you don't kind of have that love for yourself, when you don't know your worth, that's bound to happen when you're with a person who doesn't acknowledge it either. Like, I'm not even, and again, like, this can kind of go into the conversation we were having last week about, like, what being a carefree black girl is. And I said, like, you know, it's kind of like, you know, you stripping yourself down and then you finding yourself. Like, I think people should be real. I think they should be transparent. I think they should give her a break. Um, I don't think it's something to chastise her about. Like, the, the, okay. And I think it was necessary to have like the and obviously it was around Valentine's Day, so a lot of people were like, "Oh, I was triggered, I was triggered, I was triggered." That means we need to work through things. Like if you're still again, if you're still seeing this video and the relationship is over, or if you were her once and the relationship is gone and you're still feeling some kind of way, journal that, sit down and write. Like I don't, it's really not okay for people to sit down and have those emotions harbored for so long. Like there's a lot of ways to, that you can have outlets besides like putting your hands on that man or besides putting your hands she should have confronted him then no she wasn't in her right space too she was unhealthy like people i did y'all yo i was her i'm trying to tell like did y'all see um something strange about the johnsons no nobody seen that no No, we'll talk about it then we'll talk about because I want to watch it though because I've seen it so we'll talk about it seen the meme so yeah I'm not gonna talk about what it's about but I wish I would have seen it so yeah. we could have talked about that. But just how you're saying that and don't judge her and journal it and all that, that movie was some, that short film, it was about 30 minutes, some dysfunctional ass shit, some dysfunctional yeah. shit. Y'all gotta watch black it. Black shit. Now, not even black shit, just human shit. I... And it was so funny because it was a black family and right. what, I watched it with homeboys of mine. And I had my roommate who just moved in. We've been roommates for about two months. He moved to my apartment. He, the first thing he said, I said, nigga, you got an hour to text me. It's the 30 minute short film you got an hour to text me your response he said that ain't no black people stuff and i said you know what that's the same thing my homeboy said that ain't in black families and i said you're you're close-minded because 
no, that's humans, period. I said dysfunction happens in black families. Right. My mother has worked for Hillside Children's Agency. I don't know if that's a worldwide thing or just local, but since I was four years old, I'm about to be 25, and she works with dysfunctional kids, kids that comes from dysfunctional families. There's That don't just happen in incest and things. That that That's not a white people thing. That's a, It's humane. It's, you know for what sure. I mean? It's worldly. So when you were speaking about just her journaling and, just no, that was a suggestion. People, how was we were talking about limiting complexity of black people? We all are from different backgrounds, and there's people in New York and people that grew up in New York and people that grew up in the South and Louisiana. We're all different, you know what I mean? We all come from different backgrounds, and I wish I would have seen that movie, but. One thing I said in the conclusion that was to awaken people about those parents in that family, that was a weak family. There's such thing as being weak. There's black people that are weak. There's white people that are weak. But we're talking, I'm going to talk about black people because we black and this carefree black girl. But some people are weak. Maybe that girl that was in that, what is it called? Because I didn't see it. Heart bay. The heart bay. Maybe she was weak. You know what I mean? And maybe she came from weak parents. And to maybe go, she saw to, that. And to go I mean, her, breathe her. I, yeah, I, I feel like, I, I mean, that, again, there's definitely more layers to it. I was just more so speaking to the facts of how people were treating her on Twitter. And like, and again, I shouldn't say treating her or just the response. Again, for all, for me to see how many people said that it was triggering for them, it made me just realize like, damn, like we still, and again, majority of my followers or my mutual followers are black women. It just made me see like from like a mental health perspective, from a self love perspective a self-care perspective we need to still put in that work um the relationship could be long and gone you can still not have a verbal communication with this person but if you still have those emotions it's totally okay to sit down with yourself to write about it and let it go like it doesn't every like closure doesn't always need a conversation you can have closure through writing a letter to yourself you can have closure through journaling like closure does not always need a conversation but if you found that video triggering i really really would suggest that you know you sit down and you ask yourself why and you work through those points. I, I really need to see it. Closure has always been a big thing for me where with every, I don't know, I, I relate everything to being a Virgo with me, but it, I feel like a lot of it does have to be with that. But closure is a big thing for me and I feel like I always need closure to every situation, no matter what it is, a friend, a guy, no matter what, I feel like I need to talk to it, whether it's over, whether it's beginning, whether it's no, I need to know why, what, whether we done or not, I need, we need to talk about it and we need to move on and uh, whether it's so close, but then I've I had some like people that, that be like, rips the, yes, what? but then I have I'm, some people, I'm in, I'm, I'm an over analytical person. I'm an overthinker. I analyze everything. Everything for me is written down on paper and my life has to be sorted out as puzzle pieces. I need everything. Y'all can't see it, but Yam is nodding and like that's that Scorpio, right? <laughs> <laughs> I overanalyze and, everything. And I love too. that she understands me, but that's yeah. it's real. Clo- and some people don't need closure and they can just Word. move on. Not and me. I've heard people that say closure. You don't always need closure because then that'll that'll open back the door. I am an anxious person. I mm-hmm. that's okay. one of my characteristics. I'm always anxious. I'm always having an anxiety attack every day. It could be about the smallest things. Closure is big for me. The smallest things. I need closure. I need to know how you felt about that. Even if I might be comfortable with it and I can move on. I need to know how you felt. Yeah, but it's also. I'm like that too. Because sometimes I really don't. The Virgos that raise me. I am like that. Like I I will hunt you the fuck down. I will hunt you down. Like I just want to know how you felt. Because I need to know you. I need need to make sure respect was in the picture. Exactly. That's what it's about really. No, And And then I can move on. And I think in that point in time that's totally okay again. Like. For that instance, for her to see through, I guess the experiment or whatever, having them come sit face to face was closure, was their way of closure. Yeah. But I'm saying it more so for all the other people who that situation resonated with them. So then, Brie, I think it's I a ask? bigger issue that, yeah, go ahead. Okay, because you said the majority of your followers are black women. Yes. How did, how did the men respond? Because I didn't see. See, okay. The thing is, a lot of them are like making memes about it and like, oh, like right. black men don't cheat. He's the one anomaly. Like all so like. So Hotep's response. Yeah, no, 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 no. Like right. <laughs> wait. <laughs> Woo. We ain't going to go there. Too many stories. Hotep, black men. But I'm, I mean, I feel like, I don't know. We talk about, I love a story. Lord, I just, I no, but the way that. Everyone, or the way that majority of people respond to to 
their like social experiment or the interaction it just shed light on like how people might not have gotten closure and if they don't have the opportunity to sit face to face and they think if that would be more self-harm than self-good I, then this I, is just seen, another- I, I haven't seen like maybe it's the people that i follow like mm-hmm. i don't they don't no one has really talked about i think about it's also because it. i'm in college okay so a lot of okay. my 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 peer group were in a in a phase of life where we could have uh, uh, for people that i again that i follow yeah um were in relationships they didn't end good Mm -hmm. and they ended on a really sour note that's just what the triggering Mm seemed like everybody was some people were like oh i couldn't even watch it Mm. because i don't want to feel that pain again i said you know we need to we need i see what you mean yeah i I don't know if i'm the only one but i just closure doesn't do anything for me like once i'm done with a person i really don't care what you have to say like when my last when my last um my ex, we had closure off the strength that it was everything blew up in my face. So I needed I needed answers. Like, okay, wait, what happened? But for the most part, ever since that day, like I've never seen like we don't speak. It's nothing to talk about. But I don't I don't want to ask. I think you question. so then you had your closure. But that's yeah. closure. I was gonna say that's um, one thing when somebody yeah, closure is different to everybody. It's different when somebody yeah. ghosts on you and then um, you see this motherfucker in the street. Telling you that is closure. Like, I've I've been in. The, no, but the thing is, it, I mean, we'll need about a couple more bottles of wine to, <laughs> to really get into that. But basically, no, maybe like, we'll save it for another. Yeah. yeah, it was just more so like a girl came up to me that he'd been denying for two years what? and showed me receipts. And like, this, so that's real. And, that, so, and that's, and wait, that's and they, the, as in they went together and old boy tried to say, well, that wasn't a thing. No, no. He, he was her assistant. Like she, no. Yeah, mm. she was his assistant. That's what he was calling her. I don't know what... I mean, this is where I say every girl needs their dumb moment because this nigga had no job, but you needed an assistant for. Mm. But whatever. That was that. But you know what? <laughs> she, for like for about a year and a half, she was like, yeah, no, it's nothing going on. It's nothing going on. So then she was the, dumb, too. She was dumb, too. So then yeah, like... Weak. Weak. And then, like, but you know... No, like, and I've, be, I've, yeah. I've confronted them together in person. Like, yo, what's going on? Blah, blah, blah. Because he was a ball player. Stay away from the Scorpio ball plays, but whatever. Girl. <laughs> and he got uh, job and he played ball. Uh, I don't. And he was a Scorpio. Uh, and he was a Scorpio. Mm. Let's go. Mm. Mm. But like anyway, so she was just like, "No, we're just professional." And then uh-huh. it all came out. Mm-hmm. It was just mm. like I don't know. She, I guess she met like she saw us together one day, and then that night it was a just oh I was with you know it was just everything That's out. Closer. Like she finally like told me the truth. First off, bitch, <laughs> That's a, I'm sorry to say that, but first off, you about two years motherfucker too late, all right? Because you could have told me this about six months ago oh, yeah. when my feelings wasn't all that and motherfucking involved. So. It's like, why was all, but what was going on I didn't with mean, him? He I, was, you why know. Why weren't they together? He was a That's lack what of, I don't understand about guys. Like, well, why weren't they just together and happy? What did you have to do with it? Right. What it was, if they, he, and his answer to that niggas. was like, she was all right. So I know from his like upbringing, like he had that lack of love. Like his mother just wasn't affectionate, and his father was ghost, you know. And then I come along, like I make him laugh. You know, I'm a real funny person. I'm me. Like she did everything for him, and I was a challenge for him. And that's how he explained it. Like you said no to me. I couldn't give her up because she never said no. But at the same time, I didn't want to be with her. Because she never said no. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like, he was like, you know, I'm in love with you, but she's the one giving me money. She's the one giving mm-hmm. me money for our dates. Like, mm-hmm. she's the one that's, you know. Wow, like, wow this is really so loaded. familiar. It's real. This is such it's, a loaded and, and, story. And so, but this is the thing, though. She was fine. She was with fine you with no, being there until, until she started feeling something more. more. That's so, what it was. And, what, and, like, how it happened was it was on her birthday, I was with him. And, uh, like, you know, we put up a picture on Instagram, and then she liked it. Mind you, like, we don't follow each other on Instagram. So I just I asked him, like, why is she liking this? Because we already had problems about her. And then this specific day, like, he got on his knees. I, we was on a train. He yelled to the train, everybody, this is the, you know. What sign was he? He's a Scorpio. Oh, <laughs> so See, this he is was just, wild. He was such a Casanova. I'm not. Like, my family hated him, but I'm not that type of person that's going to date because of my family <laughs> like you. Like, he was everything to me, you know? Like, he was he was a love that I loved him because of him. I didn't love him for what he did for me. Because we, we used to eat struggle meals together. Like, it didn't matter. Mm-hmm. So, 
The reason why I was so hurt it was because you two years, like you made me insta. You kind of like pulled the insecure card. Like, why are you so worried about this girl? You know, like stop being so insecure. But I was right all along. Mm-hmm. And it's just like it was a lie from the beginning because like our first official date was my twenty first birthday. Like he took me to Six Flags, we went out to some fritos, and he did all this on with her money. Oh my you word! You know what I'm saying? That's so well, that was, oh my word! Girls. God help. So see, <laughs> yo, all of this relationship good talk. No, I think I think I don't know. This is this is a lot, but I feel like these are conversations that needed to be heard because I guarantee you. Someone listening is going to be like, damn, I wasn't it's the crazy. only one. Or like, damn, it's happened to me too. Like, So I think your transparency is definitely something that will be receptive and appreciated. And because- me and her spoke. Like, because like, when she hit me up that night, it was midnight. I said, bitch, meet me right now. Let's go to his house. Like, that's that's the. <sighs> so she met me. A train never moved that motherfucking fast from the Bronx to Manhattan. I got there in 20 minutes. I called him like, oh, hey, I'm just walking home from the gym. He's like, oh, really? First of all, he shouldn't know that was a lot of my ass ain't no gym. But whatever. So I kind of told him, like, come downstairs. She was hiding behind, like, oh, this was, oh, this should have been a movie. It was so good. <laughs> so she's standing behind the door. He comes outside. He sees her. Motherfucker closes the door. But I caught that shit. Whoop. So we come in the building. He's sitting there. And he just looks so... He was so nonchalant, I could have punched him in his motherfucking face. Scorpio. Oh, I was, I was, yeah, Scorpio. no, that's that Scorpio, Scorpio shit. Scorpio men. That's he that was Scorpio like, shit. What are we doing? He was on some I got caught. So she was like, are you in love that's with that her? That's that Scorpio he shit. He was like, yeah. Like, this is what she asked him. And I'm like, was you having sex with her? Because that's honestly what I was worried about. You have to be responsible with my body. You get right. it? Like, and that's, people just like, cheating is not just emotional. It's, you're putting my my life in danger. I don't know who yeah. you're sleeping with. But what you said about yeah. the body counting, do you sleep with guys who have triple count? No, I don't want that guy that sleeps but with But if he's clean with with a hundred do- with a hundred body count, it's still an issue. Oh, this is a loaded <laughs> conversation. <laughs> this is a loaded conversation. But that's my thing. And he used to think I was bugging because I used to tell him, like, Oh Honestly, I used to tell him like you keep throwing my pH balance off. Who who are you having sex with? Like who are you? He's like you're bugging out. You're crazy. I said every you didn't touch me five times this year because I don't know where the fuck you've been. And every time you touch me, my pH balance went crazy. So who? And that you can really tell. Girls got to pay attention to that. Like are you yeah. are you being protected? Like are you? Well, with him, I was going for years, so I didn't feel nah, the need to be regardless, protected. Regardless, you gotta. But then after that, like. I'm like, all right. That's another thing to speak about with um, us black women. I feel like protection or not. I feel like when we were all growing up and being raised and taught about sex, it was always protection, protection, condoms. You need condoms. If you don't fuck with the condom, you're going to get STD. You need to have a right. condom, condom. I feel like now that I do you use condoms. Well, I haven't had sex since December. So. Do you use condoms? <laughs> I mean, I do use condoms, but I didn't use condoms with him. And that was Ever? after a while. No, no, no. Like, we started off with condoms, but then, like, a couple of months into the it relationship, didn't. it was, I don't nah, know about you y'all. you grip up, strap up, condoms. yes. I feel like, I'm going to keep it, I, nah, I keep it real, I don't like, um, I'm not an overly sexual person, but that is something that I need to be more up on. That is something that I need to be more up on. I'm not an over-sexually person, but my protection. But I, I prayed when I was young for a protecting over my body, and I have faith in the Lord. Like, um, I have faith over. That is so cute, though. I'm that surprised, is so Virgo. <laughs> that no, is so I'm adorable. So I did, though. Like, when I was younger, I prayed over my body. Like, Lord, I, that, that wasn't for me. That wasn't in my life plan to ne- to have STDs and to have those problems. That You know, that wasn't for me. And you just going to put people in my path that don't have problems like that. And I'm, I don't always protect myself. I'm going to keep it real. And I'm going to just say it because I feel like a lot of black women don't. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of us that do Mm -hmm. and that that are some like I was. I remember remember single ladies. I love that show. Mm -hmm. And I remember I was watching the episode and Lisa Ray. She slept with a guy and she was like, "Mm -mm, no glove, no love. And I was like, damn, Mm -hmm. why that ain't me? It's weird because I I mean, I used to be like a big stare of. Condom penis ain't all that to me. Like, I didn't use a condom. But <laughs> I until I had a say condom, that too. Until I had a condom <laughs> penis snatch my soul. And I'm just like, okay. 
<laughs> I, I take the condoms because he Cause he knew he what to it. do. Yeah, he he you hey you snatch you know he's, you know what? Give me my Jeezy. soul back if you listen. Jeezy, to me. Jeezy. <laughs> nah. oh my God. give me my soul. My soul still with him. On the tip um. of, of black women's bodies, though, and especially beauty, I think I think it is definitely important that we're mindful of what we do put into our bodies because it does come out in different ways and. Um, yeah, that's true. Um, so, and Montego Bay, you know, it's a pity that y'all look like idiots. Yo, boo, let me know when I should rip to rip that. I man, he don't call me anymore. We don't even kiss. Am I his fool? What must I do to keep him loving me? All this love I give. That ain't cool. Got what you want. Got what you need. Keeping along the lines of that conversation, um, not only is it important to like keep protect your your health that way, like you know reproductive health, but I think also people overlook the kind of products they use, what's in the products. Yeah. Um, toxicity of certain products. So really quick, let me ask y'all, what kind of deodorant do y'all use? I love Secret. Okay, what else? I use Dove. Okay, what else? I you I feel like I use a lot. My mother I like she, because too. she works in a home, I feel like she just brings home what no, they that's have fine. and I bring Do it. you do you read what's in them? My roommate though, I had a roommate and she was like I don't know what the product is. Maybe it's aluminum. Yeah, okay. Yeah. But do you know but I'm that's what I'm saying. Like do you know what's in? Sometimes no. I read it and I got a she she said no. she started using That's that non aluminum cancer so, stuff. And she said I must eat. Can I use some of your deodorant? Well, okay. Well, that's <laughs> well, that's fine. I mean, I use I use um, deodorants with no aluminum, no parabens, and um, it's it's a but transition you're, you're process. A too, no, but it's also it, no the way that it works though is a transition process. Like when I cut from go using aluminum because aluminum has carcinogenics in it. Um, I don't know if y'all like ever get those like little bumps like under your arms that kind of feel like um, pimples or whatever. Nah. But you have no. well, that's <laughs> good. Nah. No, that's good. But it's nah. <laughs> it's a sign from aluminum. A lot of people get them because you have lymph nodes there. So it's not actually a pimple. It's like your lymph being irritated, right? So basically, if you think about the way deodorant works, um, it's your excretory system. You know the things that helps you get rid of toxins. It's your skin, the biggest part. So um. You're basically, when you put deodorant on, you're blocking that. There's a ton of more information, like, on the blog about, like, how I transition to how I use it. But, you know, beauty, people tend to isolate beauty from health. They definitely, like, go one one and the same. Especially with, like, all these, like, popular, like, YouTube trends. Like, I don't know if y'all saw, like, the girls putting condoms over beauty blenders to put in their makeup. Yeah. Yeah, what? like little things I like that. Like people that. really that Yeah, okay. So you know silicone, you know silicone, how there's, like, a new silicone beauty blender? Some people that. try to do hacks. Mm-hmm. And they would put a beauty blender inside of a condom to try to like blend in their makeup. That don't work. You don't want to put that on your condom skin. Condom is not supposed to be so, on my face. Exactly. Speak. Here we go. Okay. Exactly. So what is supposed to be on, on your face? <laughs> what do y'all use to wash your makeup brushes with? Or how often do you? Two questions. How often do you wash your makeup brushes? And what do you use? Uh, so I'm, I'm past due. Weekend. But what I do is I use a few drops of of Castile soap. Okay. And water, and I um, let it soak over for a day, and then I rinse oh, soak. it out. Okay. Yeah. What kind of? What, I'll, I will keep going around now. Um, I don't as often as I should, but I feel That's like common. my yeah my if I did often I use I'm a mixture between Aveeno and black African soap products. Okay. So I feel like I would just just like with toothpaste and people that have grills and anything right. like that, you know, you, you do a warm water solution, you put some soap in it and I would let it soak as mm-hmm. well. Okay. Soft brush oil, but I would do it with the African black soap. Definitely. Okay. Anyone else want to share? Um, it's weird. I use like this old, like, Oh, oh um, it's weird because I shouldn't, like you said, Dodge. Like I should definitely wash my brushes more. More, yeah. That's definitely a common thing that people. But month, I get facials. Do you bad. get facials? I I do my own facials. I just got this. Nah, I don't. I can't say this name, but it's like a vegan thing. This girl at my job put me on. <laughs> it's um. It's called like this cleansing milk. It's oh yeah, Dr. I know what you're talking Dr. about, Doctor Bronner's. No, it starts with the H. But I don't know. It's amazing though, like, and that's what I've been using recently okay. to clean my brushes. Before that, it was some regular Olay. Okay, so okay, I don't know. Again, talking about like YouTube trends, what people do. A lot of people like use just detergent, and I'm here to say, don't use things that you wouldn't use on your yeah, face to like clean your makeup brushes. Um, brushes. I have there's again like on the. <laughs> 
uh, basically. But on the blog, there's a lot of like tips. There's actually a tutorial too. Um, I'm sure we can post it on the Carefree Black Girl social media pages. But just a way to like really quickly clean your brushes and do it safe without damaging your brushes and also like, you know, without causing a breakout. So that's kind of like the way to kind of keep your beauty and your health aligned for the future, especially if you're like me. I don't wear makeup every day, but when I do wear makeup, I wear a lot. So that's important if you're also like trying to keep your skin together while also like beating your face. That's a good. Water is key though. Because oh, key. water Moisture is everything. I drink. You know what you're supposed to do with water? I will suggest putting a, a like a. Sh- you can take the you can take the shot by yourself with apple cider vinegar. Yeah, I do that. I do, I do that as I do well. Every now and again. But you know what I've been doing recently because um I'm just getting over the flu. Um, I've been putting the shot of apple cider vinegar into water. Mm. And just putting a little bit of honey and drinking it that way. Yeah. And, and a lot of water, though. So it's kind of diluted. So I do drink it throughout the day. But just basically, yes, getting your water intake will also help. Oh. Okay. Um, so, yeah. So let's begin the segment off. Um, tell me who you are and what do you do? She does Who everything. am I? Everything. Everything. She's the go-to. Go-to She low-key. I low-key spin um, that Yams is like a fly-ass rapper. Girl. I'm a quiet. Right. What? I'm a rapper. <laughs> you give me rapper vibes. Oh, you do nah. give me rap vibes. You actually do give me rapper vibes, though. You give me <laughs> nah. rapper vibes. I enjoy a good rap song, a good rapper. Um, and Spit I, something. <laughs> I ain't gonna rap, because I might stop coughing and it just turn into something else. But um, I'm... A New York native, um, always had uh, authorship and just writing as a child has always been my thing. Um, When I was a child, I wanted to write children's literature. Mm. Um, My older brother, who was a Virgo, he put me through this course um, when I was in junior high school to learn how to uh, write children's literature and um, do illustration for that kind of stuff. So I grew up with a a fine arts background and just writing things that were age appropriate. Um, And that same brother, he also had a huge CD collection. This is when CDs were like it. I have all my CDs and all my DVDs. Yeah. So his, his was monstrous. Um, He had a, a CD collection, all genres you could think of. Um, alphabetized and in numerical order Mm -hmm. and I would go and read the liner notes of all of them um hundreds thousands of cds and he also had a vibe magazine um subscription and I had a bizarre magazine subscription and that's where the idea of turning it into an editorial thing and, and writing for magazines came um at the time I was maybe nine from what I remember, and I would read rap lyrics. Specifically, I can remember reading um, Lil' Kim's hardcore rap lyrics and kind of just understanding different forms of writing was very important for me. So songwriting is something that um, I didn't necessarily do, but I fell in love with that type of storytelling. Um, So that's that's kind of where it started for me and wanting to write for Vibe magazine and later finding on um, from when I was in college that that wasn't necessarily going to be the thing and then starting my own magazine. So I guess uh, now to follow up with that, my question is that as someone who has done a lot of moving and shaking and you've opened doors for yourself and you've made a lot of great things happen, what advice would you give to either young women or young people of color trying to move through the ladders the way you have or do what you do? Um, I'm a big person on you go in and you go out. Anywhere that you're invited to, I would say you show up, but you don't linger because you're a woman. Mm. You make your presence be known and you disappear. Let me tell you why. Because first and foremost, I know there's gentlemen in this room, you know, and I don't like to slight anybody, you know, but men, I wouldn't say men run the industry because that's not true. There's a lot of women. I see so many women. Um, But they are the ones that are on the forefront, and they are the stars. 
They are the ones that we push forward. We, they are the ones that we mother. And because they are those types of people, the ones that are behind the scenes, and then there's the other type of women who just sought out to be with these men. You know, some people call them groupies. Um, some people call them opportunists. Um, or some people just call them promiscuous, whatever it is, um, I feel like they also have their place, right? Because what would the industry be without it? But because you are also a woman and there's no name tag to say this person belongs behind the scenes, this person is a professional, this person is to be respected, you get in and you get out, you do your job and you leave. This is what has preserved me. Um, Then there's also the woman who maybe her intention is not to be promiscuous or not to fall in love with someone that they work with, but it happens. And then they are perceived as someone that shouldn't be respected or their work is now devalued because they slept with someone, Mm -hmm. Um, you know, and until you make your mark and until you are somebody that is a go-to, it's very hard to sift through mm-hmm. that. You know what I'm saying? Because it's, it's just so many people look alike mm-hmm. in those settings mm-hmm. at night. That's mm-hmm. true. So, that was, bro. I'm glad you said that. that. Yeah, that was important. So you have to... That was, that was yeah, that was important. important. So this is if you want to be taken seriously. Um, sex is great. You know, mm-hmm. I encourage everybody to have sex. And attraction. Attraction Absolutely. is deep. Absolutely. And... Being in the industry, you may fall in love with somebody that's in the industry because that's also natural. But you have to know that if you do go ahead and take on this relationship with someone, be it a male or female, whatever it is, just try to pace yourself. You know, don't get with this person, be with them for a few months or a few years and then hop into it with somebody else because that's also hard for you to decipher. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And it's like, what is this person's intentions? Mm -hmm. So if you stick and move, then it's like, okay, yeah, she was there. But she wasn't there when all that other shit was going on. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? She was there and she like, okay, you want to do that. That that would be my ultimate advice to any woman, um, specifically women of color. Mm -hmm. Because, Mm -hmm. you know, we're not always... um, chosen to be the trophy wife you know we might be there to ride or die you know go ahead and hold the drugs for me or whatever it is you know like or be there for me while i'm on my way up and then when he get on he leave (laughs) you know like but but you know is there's 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 that so that i think rappers writers business professionals you should definitely just pay attention to that because when you turn around and you look and it's like okay I've been in this industry for 10 years what have I done and then it's like if all you can see is your relationships mm. and not work that's a problem <laughs> that's, self, that's self-control it, girl. Lady. self-control it. like I just time. knew how to say that again because that spoke to my soul I think I got my soul back from that because <laughs> you spoke yeah. to it if you yeah. look back bro, on your we life silent. we silent over here like Ooh. Woo. Mm. My mm. soul just woke up. I, could, I, could, I feel like I could shout right now. Like, I. I yes. a, you a blessing right now. Really? You are no, a seriously. blessing. Thank you. I, I love so that much you're else. here. Thank you for being here. And it's it's levels. And maybe you will level up from us. Right. You will you right. level up. No, seriously. And, and I totally appreciate. I, I appreciate everything you just said. And I appreciate people that could put me on i feel like i'm always a person that put people on and people you know what you i mean know, circles get, that mm-hmm. you, you're in and you feel like you're always putting people on i love being around people that could put me on and i'm from rochester i'm from a small city so being in new york city i'm opening up to oh my god so many different types of people i thank you you're welcome thank, thank you, you so much again yams where can thank we find you. you online where can we find you and your work online um you should go to Twitter. <laughs> I need to get a Twitter. The Yams. I think that's the best place All to right, go. So it, at the Yams on Twitter? Yes. Okay. All right. Wonderful. Thank you so much. Oh, and that concludes episode two. 
of Carefree Black Girl Podcast. This was such a dope episode. It I was. Think so too. We didn't went from Beyonce to moving up, and then let it, it was because it, and, and again, this is real. complexity oh. to black women. We have levels. We're complex. We have a lot going on. Carefree black girl, black girl magic 2.0. This is Is Jones, and you can find us on iTunes. And don't forget to use the hashtag hashtag Carefree Black Girl to keep up with the conversation. This is Is Jones. This is Daj at Everything New York. This is Ivy, Ivy Like Blue. Uh, this is Brianna Danielle, also at Where She Begins. This is um, at Aurorian Shire, A R U R I A N S H I R E. And we have our guest, <laughs> Rich Dean Yams Barty. We love her. <laughs> She's like our spiritual mother, our spiritual goddess. We just we talked that. about not oh, and also black for- women are the mother. Also, Again. Again. <laughs> also, um, please keep up with the conversation via Twitter. Um, follow us, um, comments and DMs of questions. The handle is CFBG Pod. And also through the hashtag Carefree Black Girl. This is an indie creator network podcast. I did it. Shop Amazon for last minute gifts. Great deals for everyone on your list. Gifts for mom and gifts for dad. Even for your sister and your brother, Chad. Ah, shoot, we didn't realize we were supposed to get a gift for our dog walker guy. We almost forgot about our dentist, Dr. Kerr. We didn't expect to get a gift from her. Or our cousin, I forget his name. He got us something nice, better reciprocate. For last minute deals on gifts for people you forgot. Get fast and free shipping at Amazon.